Welcome to Coco Maker Episode 1. I am here with Edrado, Nick, and Carl. We're going to be teaching you the basics of Coco from the start to the end. What you need to write Coco is Xcode. Xcode is an IDE to help you build your applications easier and quickly. And to get Xcode, there are three ways you can do it. You can get it from the DVD that came with your computer, which, or you bought it off of eBay or wherever you want, got it from. Um, or you can go to developer.apple.com and click on the Mac session. De not develop, developer. When you're inside the Mac system, you should uh, be prompt to log in before you can download, which t you can get a free account. You don't have to pay at all to get it. They may have some like paid me uh, memberships to where you can get like um, beta builds of Mac OS X and stuff like that, but you don't need it. So I'm going to log into my account. Once you're logged in, you would get a link that is download Xcode version 3.2.1, which is current. And once you download it, you just run an installer and go through the steps to installing it. In the extra options, you can get um, options to install uh, um, SDKs for building on 10.4 or 10. Point, um, Five, I'm guessing. I'm not sure if they have that or not. Not in, in, as an option, but yes, you can. Uh, they have an option to build for 10.4 if you ever need to build for 10.4. And also, if you're wondering about the iPhone SDK, you get that inside the iPhone um, Dev Center, which you need to have an account for as well, which is free or ninety-nine dollars. And once you log in, you should be able to get the download SDK and builds link. And then you got the Snow Leopard, Leopard, whatever you need. And it allows you to build for iPhone. That is it with this. Once you're done installing it, you go into your hard disk and then developer. In developer, they have the applications folder. In the applications folder, you get Xcode. You may want to add Xcode and Interface Builder and Instruments into your dock so that's easier to access whenever you need it. Once you're uh, done doing that, just launch Xcode and you should get an interface which allows you to, to like get a quick start of things you already, which is too big to fit on the screen, so I'm just going to hit return, which is OK. No, wait. That opens my project flows on those changes. OK. So whenever you're done, you just create a new um, project, which inside the file menu, new project. And then you can go and create different types of things from iPhone stuff to um, Mac OS X stuff. It's, and we're going to be make, uh, teaching you the basics of, of Coco. And to do this, we're going to use the um, command line tool for Mac OS X Foundation. There's all of these different things in this pop-up. C, C++, Core Data, found, Core Foundation, and Core Services. The only thing you care about for Coco is foundation, because foundation is is the foundation of Coco, which contains and its data and a string and all that uh, stuff which is needed. Once you choose that, you hit choose, and then you type in the name of your projects, and I'm gonna name this Hello 
world. No idea why developers do that first. But yes, I am going to make it this. You click save. And you get this interface here. Which, by default, it automatically has the text editor and all this stuff. But what I like to do, you don't have to change it, but I like it, is to have it all in one. And to change it to all in one is you, is you close the window, you go into the um, preferences, which is command at comma, and you choose from default to all in one. And I don't like having the automatic open stuff for the uh, for the um, ed editor, so I just leave that stuff um, and, s uh, and checked off. Whenever you're done, just reopen that project you had open, and you got Do your button. project with the new the layout. layout. Now the yeah. layout, you get this page which contains the Xcode project and the Xcode debug. Whenever you click on debug, you get this debug place where I'm going to teach you how to do that in a later episode, but it would allow you to see whenever it crashes and what caused the crash. Now we're going back into the project, and there's this menu here for... 10.6 debug dot 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 and it, can, uh, and it has like the current settings for it, which um what you're going to build your thing for and debug is where you want to debug things because it doesn't build for 10 point uh, um for power pc intel or 10 uh, x88 68 it only builds for your current operating system platform and then release is what you want to use. You have to use this if you're going to release it to the plug public to allow them to um, use it. And I have it set for i386, which is Intel, and it debug because I'm debugging it. Now, inside of the project details tab there is all your files for the project on the groups and files they have all the different yep. groups for the targets targets is basically the uh, the um thing that's going to build whenever you're um building the application or command line tool if you double click on it you will get this info panel which contains information on the uh, on what's going to happen whenever you build it like you can change what um OS to build for and all that if i'm stepping ahead of you guys just let me know if you're there don't know if they're here or not inside the project which is Indicated and anti indicated by the um, Xcode project icon. You can go in there and you see source, documentation, external frameworks, and uh, whatever it else it says, and pro uh, products. And the products you can see what the actual program is that's built, if it's built. Right now it's red because it's not built. And inside of the external frameworks is that the frameworks that are included into your um, project. Gecko, I have a question. Yes. Um, when you're doing the debug, why wouldn't you do release? Wouldn't it m make more sense so you know if it works on all computers instead of just yours so you can get the debug faster? Well, um, if you're doing in the release, it, de it only runs it on your platform anyway, so... What's the point in building every other pa for every other platform whenever you only need to te uh, to test with what the platform you're using? It takes longer to build if you'd have it in with in release and all that. Oh, okay, that right, makes sense. 
so now that we're done with that, um, the documentation, I haven't really looked much into it, but I'm guessing it's for, like, the man files. Like, in Terminal, if you type in man, uh, whatever the command is you want to find out about, it's it pops up information on that command. And then in sources is where your sources are for, like, the hello world and the hello world prefix. The prefix is what builds, like, and what is in included into every, th every single file whenever you it builds. So, in this case, it's foundation.h, which is inside the foundation framework. And e every single um, file that is built with uh, is going to include that into it. Which I would show you in a later episode how you can change the name and all that. But that's it. And then hello.h, I mean .m, hello world.m is the um, file that contains the source code of this project. Inside this project, we got import foundation.h, which um, imports the same thing which is imported inside of the prefix header file, and then inside of, um, bit down two lines below, there's int main, int argument count, consist char a character, um, argument v, which, um, is the name of the function that is being called, and inside of c, Every single um, program for uh, the starting method, I mean the starting function, is called main. Which main is uh, uh, returns zero if it ran fine, and one if it if it contained an error. And then and argument C, which is the argument count. Is like if you wanted to add additional things to the command as you run it. For like, um, if you ran terminal, inside of terminal, if you like type in my command and then add a space and type in like minus i. Minus i is an argument which is going to be inside of the uh, the argument v, and it's this is going to be incremented each time it added space for o or whatever. That's going to add a new n count to it. And to run through that, you have to um, basically go or um, in this log percent s because it's a string. And then argument v zero, which gets because zero is the command's name in the path that it ret this will return the command name. But if I put one, it will be the minus s. Two would be minus um, o. And that's how that uh, how the arguments work. And the line below that is in this auto release pool, which you need this if you're going to create a new thread or if you're starting a new um, Cocoa instance. Because what it does is it um, makes sure everything gets released automatically that you uh, don't have a retain on. I would explain more about retain release, auto-release, and all that later on. But you must have this inside of a new thread and inside of a new, uh, like, in a new application like this main function. It can, it's a new application, so it needs the honest auto-release to pull to release things that has been auto-released. The next line below is insert code here, that's a comment. It's indicated by the two forward slashes. You can create another type of comment, which 
is a unlimited line until end comment is called, which is called by forward slash star. Now everything that's in between here and the end comment, which is star forward slash, is a comment. So you can type in hello, la, or whatever you want inside that comment, and it will not be compiled. Comments will never be compiled into the source code. I mean, into the program. That means that these are just for, like, you to, like, add the different information for you to read later on about the code. Some people, like, add warnings for, you, I need to change this implementation, it's a bad implementation, and stuff like that. Like, this one is insert code here. It's saying basically replace the and it's log hello world and it with your, the code you want to write into the into the program. The NS log is a function. It's a function that allows a limited amount of arguments. The first argument is hello world, which it it's indicated as a string by the at before the um, float. And if it was a um, chair, it would not have an at before, and it will be like that. Which in its log, it doesn't accept chairs. You would notice a warning if I built this without uh, with it as a chair. Which I'm going to build it. Which is compile. Uh, which to build it, you go to the build menu and you go to build. Uh, which. It would be here if it didn't have stop it. And you see here that it returned an error. Pass an argument 1 to of NS log from incompatible pointer type. That means that this is a, uh, this is a pointer and not a object. Objects are part of, um, Objective C. Basically, it's a, if I add the at to this, it becomes an in a string, which is a object and not a pointer, and which will successfully build. Down below is where we drain the pool, which we created up here, and that um, releases everything that was not auto released that is in the auto release pool. And then below that is return zero. You must have a return inside of a a function that has this uh, um, the. If it was void, then it would not need to return anything. But anything else but void, it would need to return something. Like if I made this so it returns int, which is integ integer. Then you have to return an integer. You can't return an in a string or in, or a chair. So like if I typed in hello here instead of a integer and build it, it would say an error. Return makes integer from pointer without a cast. And that's because it's it's wanting a integer and not a um, pointer. So I make it into a integer by returning zero, and that would return no errors found, and it will build. When you're building it, what is it building? Uh, you can find out by um, I'm gonna go ahead and go to build clean, and then if you go to the build results tab inside the project, you would see. All the uh, different things that was written, which I should make it bigger so I can see. Okay, here we go. If you go to all messages, you can see all the messages that was used to build it. Uh, so it tells you where it's working. It tells you what, uh, what was built and what was done whenever. It would, uh, if it had an error, you would see the error in here as well as in the source code. 
but it's better off to see the error in here because you, you can see different comments and double click to see what uh, where the error is at. And there's also, if you right click and expand and collapse all transactions, this will show you the pure command that they're running inside of the uh, command line, which is cl uh, claim remove, claim build, whatever, remove. So yeah, that's just stuff you don't need to know, but it, it would, like if you wanted to see how it actually works, you can do that and see exactly what Xcode is doing behind the uh, the curtain. Okay. I'm going to go back and open up this. So now, whenever we run this code that we built, oh wait, I'm as well show you the build commands. So whenever you build, you get this. Pre-compiling, which is running that command, and then it's going out and building the M, the Hello World M, and making it into a Hello World object, which a object is just a binary object. You can't do much without it unless you link it into a binary. Which this command right here is doing, linking it into a binary. Okay. Now that we built it, we can go into here. And there's this little notch here. What that notch is, is the result of the command. Like what the command outputs. So if I command R for run, it would build and run inside here. And it says, hello world, because that's what we have it saying right here. If we change it to, hello someone, it would say, hello someone, inside of the command. You can also run this by terminal, if you know the path of where it's stored. You can get the path by going to pro uh, products, and by clicking on hello world, review and finder. You get the hello world command inside finder, and then you can open terminal and drag the command in here. Hit return, and you get hello someone from what you wrote inside of the code. If you want to make it so it says hello, um, whatever you pass it through an argument, you just go to, you just type in percent string, which is percent, and then add argument v1. And you may want to check that they have argument 1 before, uh, before you do, or you may also want to do the, uh, make it into a string and say, like, if the argument doesn't exist, then just make it hello world. This is how we would do that. And it's string. Uh, name equals world, and that would say basically the name equals world, and it's a type of an string. The star means it's an object, and it's this is a string that's making it equal. And then we're going to say if argument C is um, smaller than 2, then make, oh uh, wait, we want bigger because it's, if it's bigger than 2, we're going to make the name, the name that they passed by. If bigger than 2, then name equals in a string allocate init with bytes uh, argument v1 star length 
argument v1. I would explain this code here after I'm done writing it. And then we're going to make the encoding NSUTF8 string encoding. And then we're going to auto release it so it doesn't create a leak. That would make name equal the name that they passed. And then all we have to do is percent object and then add name as argument to NS lock. Are you getting this so far? Yeah. So now, whenever I build this, it's a build successfully because I wrote the Santex right. And then you go into here and run it. It will say hello world because there's no argument that Xcode wouldn't pass by unless you go into the executables um, group. Inside the executables group, you have the hello world command. You can go to arguments and add an argument for Bob. And then whenever you run it, it would run with hello Bob. Or should. Hmm. Maybe I thought. Okay, there must be a bug in the code. So here's how we debug the code. You um, add a breaker point anywhere where you think the bug is. Whenever you do that, you go into the debug and you hit command run. Run what? I mean, you want to build and debug. Way too much remember. And now it says it stopped at here and it makes it equals world. Let's find out what the... Okay, so argument C equals 2. Okay, then I got my math wrong. There we go. Then it was 1, not 2 then. So, now it returns Bob. And if we go in here, it will say hello world, hello Bob. It will return hello Bob. And we can add whatever arguments we want to it, like, uh, it would say, hello, uh, and it works. So that's it. That's how you build a hello world, and you make it so it can do more than hello world. Now, let me explain to you this command that I wrote to... Um, make the string. All okay. It is saying, okay, the object and a string. I want you to go into memory. It goes into memory and then INIT with bytes is saying, initialize the object, which is all located with the uh, bytes of argument one. And then length is saying the bytes equals the length of starred length arguments one and store length is for again the length of a chair object which contains a, a string inside and then encoding is saying I want you to encode it with the encoding of NSUTF 8 string there's a whole lot of different encodings there's ASCII which is only strings like these strings right here, and then there's UTF-8, which allows strings like that, and that's it, and that's the different encoding, encodings there are. There's a whole lot more, which you can find inside the documentations. I will explain how to get view the documentations later episode, and then all of the release, because you allocated the memory, you need to have it re release at some time. Other words, you would get a leak and that would take up a lot of memory into the user's computer and you don't want the memory to be going in, uh, to be taken up in the user's computer. 
and that's and that's all done and that's how it works um, you guys have any questions not really okay so do you understand all that or do you need yeah okay that's it for this episode have a nice day and keep playing with coco